Good morning, Miss Eleanor, and a big congrats on time now. It's an absorbing, slow burn of a film with a great payoff. Thank you for saying that. That's awesome. Oh, oh you're so welcome. So let's begin with the basics, though. Your build here in the film as introducing Eleanor Lambert. So what got you interested in joining the cast? Okay, well, um, what initially got me interested, I mean, obviously when Spencer reached out to me, I felt... I felt very grateful and very humbled. I couldn't really believe he was asking me to be the lead in his film. Excuse me, that's supposed to be on Do Not Disturb. Um, so I was, I was just like, "Are you sure you want? It's me. You're calling the right person, right?" And it was, it was a wonderful conversation. And he expressed that he really believed in me and my ability to play Jenny, um, which was again just. I was so grateful to hear that and have that support. And then what really got me hooked on the story and on the character was um, Jenny is just, she's um, she's a weirdo. And I like that about her. I think she's very human. I think this whole film is, does such a wonderful job of taking snapshots of, of real responses to trauma. We've got, so many different people like yes Jenny is our is our lead and is who we follow throughout the film but she introduces us to so many different characters <clears throat> excuse me who are all responding to this one event in their you know very singular and respective ways and I think that if you can capture that in the way that I think the way that Spencer was able to capture that in a film that you know doesn't it doesn't span a very long time necessarily. Of course, there are flashbacks, but if you're able to communicate that in a short window, I think that that is an, an excellent feat. And I thought that he did such a wonderful job of, of writing these characters. You know, we've got Jenny, who's very, um, I would say, out of adjustment to the world around her. And she's very contained and has been suppressing and repressing um, a lot of herself. And then we've got my mom who's, you know, kind of blaming herself, blaming everybody, um, feeling like a, a victim, of course. And then Aunt Joan, who's the caretaker, and Tanya, who's feeling super, super guilty, and Cash, who's diving into the dream and the, and the work that they did. So I just found this sort of like, this, this, myriad of of responses to just be so human and to be so intriguing and and for jenny also she's so distant and for her to be the person that you follow is kind of off-putting you know you're like i want to know what's sometimes you know you're almost more like can we see who can we take a break from this girl because she can be so robotic and frigid and yeah so that's a very long-winded way of answering your question <laughs> no 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 it's a great answer because um let's talk about quickly about your character though jenny she's a young mother failed yeah. marriage right mm -hmm. talk to us about her i mean how uh, also looking for her brother i mean uh, in search of the answers to how yes. her brother passed away yes. how did you find her heart we just said that she's mm -hmm. kind of stoic outside but i mean she's got it's very emotional yeah, she's got a lot of, she's got some issues. <laughs> and um, yeah, Jenny, so Jenny left home at 17 when an initial family trauma sort of, you know, she was faced with either dealing with her feelings and dealing with what's going on and with, within the family and within herself or you, or she could run basically. And she chose to run. She left home. She basically hasn't really come back. Um, and she dove into sort of the externals of her life, which I think is just such a, such a common theme in our world of, you know, something's going on in here, put your focus outside and try to sort of avoid what's going on. But as, you know, as the film goes on, you see that when Jenny does emote or does respond to her surroundings, it becomes increasingly volatile. I think because she's so unpracticed at it. And in a lot of ways, she's she's still stunted. She's still very much a 17 year old. Um, you know, she's got the, the intimacy that she lost with her mother through these tragedies, I think has bled into her relationship with her son. She doesn't have a, a real connection or intimacy with her kid, which, you know, it's heartbreaking, but is can be quite common. And I think that, um, I, I found Jenny's 
I found the, the, the inner turmoil that a character like Jenny is obviously going through to be difficult to yeah. pin down sometimes as an actor, because, you know, Eleanor, the actor needs to know everything that's going on with Jenny, but Jenny doesn't know everything that's going on with Jenny. So to find that middle ground of doing your job as an actor, but also honoring the character and the story is difficult, is a difficult, you know, line to, to dance. And I was very green and I wouldn't change a single thing about it. I think it actually quite helped. Um, with the character, but I am, I am looking forward to, you know, I, I'm tonight is actually my, my last acting class. I was supposed to finish in 2020. Of course, everybody was in the middle of something. Um, I was in the middle of that. So I do have some more tools in my tool chest now that I am excited to be able to apply to future projects. But I, I, I think it, I, I mean, it couldn't have gone better considering everything that we had to work with on that project or didn't have to work with, you know, we really worked so well together. Anyway, I'm, I'm a little um, all over the place in terms of it. It's perfect. But you know what though, you're right. You touch up on it. It's it really time now is it's a family drama masquerading as a mystery. And it's really right. all about right. these family members. You're absolutely correct. When I was noticing that in the movie, I'm like, wow, she's a little cold to her son, her aunt, <laughs> Her aunt is more like jovial and playful, you know, totally. to him. Um, you know, speaking of family, though, Miss Eleanor, it's no secret that you're the daughter of the great Diane Lane, who I mm -hmm. love talking to, and Christopher Lambert. So when you indicated to them that you want to enter the family business, what did they tell you? I mean, what did they give you any advice? Well, my mom was my mom was my mom is so supportive. Both of my parents are incredibly supportive and have given me um, I, I have a I've had a I've been very privileged to be able to find my own footing um, in terms of my interests and then also in this field. Um, they were just super supportive. They were like, great, sounds really interesting. I'm so excited to hear you know, how, how you feel doing it. Uh, I also, I chose to do training and both of my parents are technically untrained. I mean, they've been trained via doing it for so long and you know they've learned everything I feel like there is to learn although there's always more to learn but um yeah you know I I doing this play I did I asked my mom to please attend all three of the performances that we had so that I could pick her brain because you know sometimes it's really important to have um people that you trust and that people that can give you honest feedback and it also is really important to practice being able to receive that feedback. You know, I think that there's a there's a, a fear of critique with something as vulnerable as acting or as any art form at all. Um, so, you know, I had to do my work to get prepared to receive. <laughs> but she gave me some amazing, fantastic healing and fortifying advice. So. Um, but, you know, I, I didn't, asking for help is, asking for help is hard. You know, it takes practice to say, I don't know what to do here necessarily. Or even if I feel like I do, there's always something more that I can, I can learn. And when I've got, you know, two masters of the craft, it, it, whose footsteps I get to follow, hopefully, maybe in some capacity, I, you know, I, I have learned and I am learning how to best, you know, lean on them and 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 receive the wisdom that they have. So <laughs> I, I have a feeling that she's not like, a, you're like, why did you do it that way or what? No, right. She's <laughs> no way. She's so she's yes. No, she's very good at offering her her insights. Um, no, not at all. Oh. I, she's she's incredibly, you know, supportive and she's. No, she offers advice in a very, very um, easy to to digest manner. If that makes sense. She's very, you know, no, no, she's no, she she couldn't she couldn't do that if she tried. I don't think. Well, maybe if she was acting in a role, she could. <laughs> no, you mentioned the play that you were just in, right? Talk to us about. I mean, what's what's next for Miss Eleanor Lambert? What's next for me? Um, I am, I've got a small role coming out in the, in the Amazon remake of Dead Ringers. I'm like 99% sure I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> anyway, it's like, anyway, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm not going to get in trouble. Um, and then I've got 
two feet, one feature um, in the springtime here and then another feature that is unclear when it will shoot and those are both written by my friends and they both wrote characters with me in mind which is just like yeah you know <laughs> pinching myself I can't believe that I'm so grateful and really excited but other than that you know audition 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 and then audition some more and then probably audition again and <laughs> just keep doing Aww. that really nope Time now is available now, right now, on demand. What do you oh hope gosh, viewers... today is the day. Yeah. Right. How, how, what do you hope for viewers to get after watching the film? That's a great question. Um, I think that, I mean, it's hard to say. I, I think that the best part about movies are kind of like the perfect example of what I think this film captures so well is it's one movie and everybody is going to have a very, very different response to it and interpretation. And it's going to hit them in the places that they are primed to receive, to be hit in, you know? So in that sense, I hope that, I hope that people are open to whatever experience they get to have of it. But for me, I thought that the film, I think that the film, you know, it culminates in, in another tragedy in a, in a, in an act of, another act of harm, let's say, of some kind and <laughs> of a big kind. And I think that this, if, pe if people can walk away with this, from this film with perhaps a snapshot of what can happen if we don't take our healing seriously, I think that, you know, it's, it's very hard. We're not given the tools necessarily. We have to really work hard to seek out tools to heal ourselves of childhood traumas, adult traumas. I mean, we're generations of, and in for so many different reasons across so many different, you know, geographies and demographics. And of course, you know, there's there's systemic issues that that compound this, no doubt. But just as simple as, you know, family of origin traumas, I feel like so many of us are walking around with these wounds that we don't even necessarily know are running so much of our unconscious choices and for most people that's you know that just can mean an overreaction to something somebody says or it's not quite as severe as maybe this story but i but i hope that you know reader readers <laughs> send help i hope that viewers um are able to yeah, get it. Get an image and a, 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 a clear shot of just what can happen when you, when every, when the people in your family and and you are kind of either forced or choose to avoid the feelings that, for some reason, someone somewhere decided are like bad and wrong, and so we're walking around responding to ourselves with such negativity and shame around some very natural, you know, human emotion that of course we want to work through. We don't want to get stuck there, but we, you know, can get really stuck if we don't face it. So that's, that's sort of what I would say in a choppy kind of messy way. <laughs> right. Attack your grief head on. Yeah. And, and, and be gentle, you know, with yourself and others as well. Of course it's, you know, nothing's a quick fix. Like in 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 that way you know we're not gonna just one day be like I did it I'm fine <laughs> you know and that's yeah. I think that's part of what's so difficult we want that you know we want to snap our fingers and go I feel better now and we can do that with so many things now so when we're faced with something that like takes time and work it's like I'll do it later right you know? right, right right the time now is to heal oh there it is <laughs> there you go there um. it is. That's it. <laughs> So, Miss Eleanor, you're from the East Coast, right? I'm actually from the West Coast, but I've been in New York for 10 years, so. Well, come visit us in Palm Springs sometime. I, are you kidding? I love Palm Springs. <laughs> California forever. It's my favorite state. I grew up in, in L.A. and spent a lot of time in Paso Robles. And the Redwoods are my favorite place on the planet. I, I will be back to California, yeah. no doubt. Well, especially now you're, you're about to have the Nor'easter, so. Take cover. No, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> well, big, big, big congrats on time now again, Miss Eleanor. Thank you so much, Manny. This was awesome. Oh, it's such so a great time to talk to you. And good luck on everything. Hey, thanks. I really appreciate that. And I'm coming, I'm coming to see you. I'm getting that sunshine. Yes, come see me and then talk to me again about, with your next projects, okay? I will. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, Miss Eleanor. Bye-bye. <laughs>